Welcome. Today I'm joined by our new friend, hairstylist, barista, and all around cool human, Gigi Weber. You're listening to Open Here, a podcast produced by PAC TV. I'm Tiff Phillips. Let's get started. Hi, Gigi. Thanks for joining us today. It's so great to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me. So you grew up in Plymouth. Tell us a little bit of a mo- more about you. Where'd you go to school? What's your family life like? Yeah, so I grew up in Plymouth. I went to Plymouth South. Um, actually my parents were the first four year graduating class out of the old Plymouth South high school. So I was the last four year graduating class out of the old high school. So I kind of thought that was kind of cool. We, you know, we started it, we ended it. Um, but I have a little brother. My little brother is graduating from Plymouth South, uh, in May. So pretty soon. (laughs) Um, and I, you know, I'm also a barista at Starbucks. So I am that as long as, as well as my hairdressing job. Um, I also play roller derby on the side. You do not. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yes, I do. My roller derby name is Slage and Scully. <laughs> so as a huge X-Files fan, I approve of that message. That's yes. amazing. So where do you do roller derby? I do it in Fairhaven. Oh my gosh. That's kind of been a little rocky since COVID, yeah. but I started getting into it right before the pandemic. So. How long have you been doing that? Um, It's I would say it's been five years now almost. Oh, that's huge. That's yeah. really great. So what's your favorite part about being a roller derby superstar? I think it's just, you know, being able to go there and, you know, getting hyped up by everybody. It's a really empowering sport. And I feel like, especially in today's world, we need women encouraging each other because um, I'm on an all women's league. So it's like, it's not like you're you're down talking everybody. You know, you come off the track and everyone's like, that was such a good play. Like, You know, we invite the other team to our after parties. So it's such a good way to get with other really strong women and find, you know, common interests with them as well. Yeah, that whole team aspect. My wife is a softball player, so I totally understand. Like, that must really, like, so you always have, like, a stack of friends to support you. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, So you're also a hairstylist. How long have you been doing that? Um, Again, five years. Oh, wow. I went to, like I said, I went to Plymouth South. So I was in the cosmetology program. Um, which is great. I really appreciated that program because instead of going to a 10 month beauty school and paying thousands of dollars, I was able to focus on my cosmetology career for four years and I didn't have to pay for it. (laughs) Is this your passion? Is this just what you love to do? Yes. I pretty much, I was born with a pair of shears in my hand. (laughs) I, I say all the time. I remember being little and always wanting to like do my dad's hair and pretending to color his hair. And he would always go, I want plaid hair. And I'd say, dad, you can't, you can't have plaid hair. But now you look around and people have rainbows. People are painting pictures on their hair. Like you can do anything. So that's why I'm so passionate about it because it's always changing. There's always different, you know, trends that you're going to be doing, different ideas that you're going to be learning and creating. So, yeah. I mean, in my eyes, I always think that hairstyling is just a huge, important part of our lives. Makes So wh- why do you think it's such a vital industry? I def- I mean, I think it's important because, I mean, everyone wants to feel good. So I, I'm so passionate about it because I like making other people feel good, whether it be emotionally or whether it be physically with their appearance. So I feel, you know, I get that chance to make them physically look good, but you know, being a hairdresser, you're also kind of a therapist. So like, I like that aspect of it too. So you're helping people in more ways than one. So how did COVID impact you? You you work at Sheer Creations in Plymouth. So how did that affect you guys? Um, So we did close down for, I would say about a month and a half. Um, And then when we came back, we had to kind of up all of our sanitation protocols and it's kind of weird because we could only have one client in at at a time so you didn't get that kind of like social interaction between everybody else's clients it was just kind of you and your client nobody else's um so that kind of like I said took away the social aspect of everything and you know as all of the rules and everything got you know lifted you could see everybody starting to get more happy, starting to talk to people. You know, when we were able to take our masks off, everyone was just so happy to be able to talk to everybody and to interact with people. And now we are back to having our group conversations and everything just flows more smoothly, Mm. you know? It was hard. It must have been hard when you guys reopened because everybody's probably like cutting their own hair. Oh my (laughs) goodness. I I told my boss we should have done like a special for like, you know, come in and we'll fix your quarantine hair. 
but it, it's true. You know, um, when we had to sh- when we had to shut down, people were turning to you know alternatives, mm-hmm. going to CVS and buying the box dye. And you know, when you're removing box dye, from our perspective, that's really tough to do. <laughs> but you know, you had no other choice. So it's something that you just kind of have to work with. You know? Right. Exactly. You're also a barista. I used yes. to live that life as well. <laughs> yes. So you do a lot of early mornings and a lot of late nights. So yes. how, how do you even do you sleep? <laughs> um, I try. I definitely do try. Um, but again, being a barista, that means you have access to espresso shots and nitro cold brew. <laughs> so uh, the caffeine definitely keeps me going. But um Definitely on my days off, I hit a wall. Right. <laughs> I go home, I throw a load of laundry in, and I am knocked out for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask, so we are pop culture enthusiasts here. We pride ourselves on being nerds. What are you listening to? What are you watching? I need to know, you know, what do you watch for TV, movies? Oh, so I did just finish Euphoria. Oh, so good. I'm not too, too big on TV shows because I feel like I can't keep up with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I do love me some American Horror Story, though. So good. For obvious reasons. <laughs> um, but I'm a big fan of David Bowie and Prince. And I actually, I've been watching Encanto recently. Aww. My boyfriend and I love it. So <laughs> that's been on repeat. Do you listen to any podcasts? Um, I listen to True Crime Obsessed with Jillian Pensavalli and Patrick Hines. Love it. Um, I'm definitely more of a true crime podcast kind of girl. I need to have something, whether it be mystery or I don't want to necessarily necessarily say murder, but you know, true crime. It's interesting. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to see how the mind works, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I gotta ask, what what do you see for yourself like in the future? Where where do you want to go? What what drives you? So there has been a recent brand. It's called Pulp Riot. And they pretty much stand for being yourself, being uniquely your own person. And they have come out with a line of fashion colors, which is all the you know rainbow colors that you see. And I would love to become an educator for them because being able to travel, but also teaching people about something that I'm passionate about and something that I love to talk about, I just feel like would be such a dream (laughs) because I I do specialize in those fun colors. So being able to travel and being a part of a team who, you know, gets to come up with those colors that they're releasing every few months, I would just, it would be an honor to be on that. (laughs) And where do you see like the hairstyling industry going forward? Do you you feel like they're going to recover from COVID and they're going to come out on top again? Or Oh, I definitely think they're going to recover, but I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely hard to tell because you know, we're always changing with our trends. We're always changing with what we're doing with our hair. So believe it or not, right now, um, mullets and perms are coming back. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not necessarily the Joe Dirt mullet, but um, it's definitely, so we're kind of starting to see some 80s trends come back around. Mm -hmm. So it's always kind of, one of those, you know, it's it's always a cycle. Something is always going to come back. So um, I definitely don't think it's going to quiet down because there's always, always something to be learning. Yeah. What does a typical day in your life look like? Um, well, so if I'm working at the salon, I usually will go in around one o'clock on a Friday or 9 a.m. on a Saturday. And I go in, I set up my station, make sure that I'm all set and ready for the day. I check my schedule. I see what I'm working with today. Um, And then I just, believe it or not, I fake it till I make it. (laughs) That was really what I was told in high school by my Cosmo teachers. And honestly, it was the best advice ever given to me. (laughs) Uh, What are some advice you'd have for people who are up and coming in the, uh, the industry? Do not compare yourself to others because... Being a almost 23-year-old stylist, um, it is definitely difficult to look around and see my older coworkers. You know, I, I wouldn't say being more successful than me, but, you know, their books are filled and they're always busy and they're not getting no-showed. And sometimes, like, my day is, like, really just open and I just need to know that I don't need to compare myself because what they do is completely different from what I do. So, like... They're doing all their beautiful highlights and their, I don't want to say normal colors or natural colors. And I'm over here doing all my fun rainbows and I put sparkles in people's hair. And (laughs) 
That's awesome. I love it. It's been such a pleasure having you here today. Thank, thank you, you so, so much for much. having me. Oh my gosh. We'll have to have you on again. <laughs> I think we'll leave it at that. I want to thank our friend for being here today. It was great chatting with you. You've been listening to Open Here, a podcast produced by the local scene of Plymouth Area Community Television. Pack TV is the community media provider for the Massachusetts towns of Plymouth, Pembroke, Kingston, and Duxbury. To see more of our content, visit packtv.org slash the local scene. I'm Tiff Phillips. Thanks for tuning in. Let's hang out again soon. Hi friends, if you like this video by The Local Scene, share the love and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe.